welcome back to the David67 uh, Celtic News YouTube channel. Today, Wednesday, the 13th of September. And today, going to do a little review of uh, our international players in who were playing yesterday um, all over the world. Uh, quick update on the current injury situation and those players who are back in training or and uh, close to being back into the team. Uh, also, a quick preview of Celtic women's match against Hearts uh, this evening at the Excelsior Stadium. Um, before we get going, um, please like and subscribe. Both are completely free, as is the quiz question in the community section. And this week, all the um, questions will be linked to previous Dundee Celtic matches uh, in preparation for this weekend's match. So uh, yesterday, uh, quite a number of Celtic players were playing um, all over the world in internationals. Um, Luis Palma, um, playing for Honduras, uh, had a apparently exceptionally good game being one of the best players in a 4 nothing win in the CONCACAF Nations League uh, match. And he scored his first international goal with a, a penalty kick, which was the third of the four goals by uh, Honduras uh, yesterday. He is a flying back um, today and will be flying into London and then from London to Glasgow, but should be back into uh, for training on Thursday, which should allow him, um, given that he is um, back to full match fitness, to be available, possibly um, starting or probably more likely coming off the bench. Um, either way, I would fully expect him to make his debut uh, against Dundee. The other player who came out of yesterday's international matches with a lot of praise and credit was uh, Rocco Vata, who is currently in Celtic's B team, who made his under-21 debut for uh, Republic of Ireland and scored two goals. Um, he remains on the radar for a number of English Premier League clubs and also Torino in Italy, and just at the end of the transfer window uh, recently shot, uh, Celtic turned down bids of around half a million pounds, apparently, from Torino and from Nottingham Forest. Vata's contract is up at the end of this season, um, and it's unclear at the moment whether there is any ongoing talks between Celtic and Rocco Vata's new agent. Um, however, given Celtic's uh, need to uh, maintain quotas of homegrown and Celtic developed players for um, European quota systems, I think uh, Celtic should put the boat, boat out to re-sign Vata on a longer term contract and incorporate him fully into the first team squad. Um, he has been starring for the B team. He does play out wide, but this season has been primarily playing through the middle, um, as well as the case uh, for the Republic of Ireland under 21s, uh, where he scored two in their victory over San Marino. Um, Rumours are also suggesting that RB Leipzig from Germany are now actively scouting Vata with a view to signing him um, next year on a simple compensation payment basis, which is the same way that we lost Ben Doak to Liverpool and Morrison to Bayern Munich. And so I do hope that Celtic, for a variety of reasons, keep hold of Rocco Vata sign him on a longer term contract, which allows us a lot more flexibility in future European squads. 
Kyogo um, started and played um, around 70 minutes for Japan yesterday in their 4-2 victory against Turkey. Um, he did not score, but was apparently uh, integral in um, creating space for other players to come through to score um, the uh, Japanese goals. Dyson Maida also appeared as a late second half, half substitute. Um, and so it was encouraging to see Kyogo back into full international duties and playing well. And hopefully his good form from uh, the last couple of months carries on to this weekend and throughout the Champions League qualifiers. All made a very brief appearance for South Korea in their friendly against Saudi Arabia, but Yang remained on the bench. And also Kwon, our other South Korean player, was away on South Korean under-23 duties and played in both of their um, victories in the Asian under-23 qualifying tournament. The other um, players we had away on international duty included Callum McGregor, who um, was rated as being one of Scotland's best players in the 3-1 loss to um, England at Hamden. Um, in the second half, he took much more control of the game, got much more involved, which was partly due to Steve Clark changing the role, um, as apparently in the first half, his role was primarily to try to nullify and blunt England's midfield, but in the second half, where he did perform much better, um, he um, gained a lot of respect from the England players and also the various pundits and journalists, and on the night was rated Scotland's best player, um, which is encouraging as I think he is going to be central to Scott Celtic's league and European campaign this year. Uh, Tiago Holm and Paolo Bernardo both played in under-21 internationals. Um, both played well, um, although neither scored, with Tiago Holm coming on as a substitute in the second half for Norway in their victory. Now, moving on to updates on um, Celtic's injury status and... Uh, players returning to, to training. Uh, Rio Hitati and Nat Phillips have both been in full training and should be fit um, for the Dundee match at the weekend, although I do wonder whether Rodgers may keep Hitati on the bench, bringing him on later in the match so that he is fresher and um more rested for the Feyenoord match next Tuesday. Um, Marco Tilio, our Australian wide player, who also can play through the middle, is back into full training, it is said. However, will take a few more weeks to get back to full match fitness, um, as he had no pre-season um, for Celtic as he was injured in mid-June in an international tournament in France when playing for Australia, um, which was part of the reason that he missed out in the Champions League squad, um, as he has yet to get back into first-team action. Um, and so uh, it was sensible to keep him in reserve um, for Scottish League matches, and then all being equal, and if all goes well, he will be available uh, for European action after Christmas uh, in Champions League knockout or uh, Europa League knockout. The um, uh, indications regarding Carmen Carter Vickers are better than may have been expected. Uh, Roger suggesting that. Um, 
CCV should be back for early October. He's starting some uh, training now, as they say, out on the grass. Um, and so is thought to be maybe a couple of weeks or so away from being uh, fit enough to get back into full action. Um, so it's likely he will miss the first couple of Champions League fixtures. But if all goes well over the next two or three weeks, he should be uh, available for uh, Premier League and uh, European uh, Champions League matches from uh, a week or two into October. Uh, Mike Navrocki's um, recovery from hamstring injury appears to be slower and is thought he, his recovery will be uh, probably another four to six weeks. Um, and so it may well be that he is going to miss the whole of the Champions League qualifiers. Um, and so it is useful that we have the backup of uh, Phillips, Lagabielka and Scales uh, to cover central defence. And hopefully in a few weeks, the CCV will be able to bring that quota up to four. With Scales also covering for left back. And of course, we also have the option of using Johnson or Ralston on the left. Um, and Rio Hitati can also double up, as can Tomoki Iwata at um, either fullback position. And so, although it is not ideal, um, the Champions League uh, squad that Celtic will be taking into the six matches, um, Celtic do have good quality players in all positions and uh, back up if required uh, to cover any injuries or suspensions. The recovery of Stephen Welsh is liable to be another couple of months or more, um, and it may well not be until uh, next year, at uh, the start of the year before he is back, but for uh, quota reasons, he was included in the Champions League squad. Finally, for um, today's uh, update video, um, Celtics women are back in league action tonight. They have a home fixture at the Excelsior Stadium at 7.35 against Hearts. Hearts are uh, one of the strongest sides outside of the big three of Celtic, Glasgow City and Rangers and often do give the big three a good game and uh, Celtic did have a couple of tight games with Celtic women last year. Um, in an interview, Fran Alonso was indicating that um, the team have recovered from the um, weekend fixture against Valorenga, where they unluckily lost 11-10 on penalties after a 2-2 draw after extra time in Oslo. Um, he feels that they will bounce back um, from the disappointment of not progressing in the Champions League and feels that this experience will serve them in great good stead for next year's Champions League qualifiers, um, where hopefully they will be going down the Champions path rather, rather than the runners-up path. He did say that, uh, unfortunately, Amy Gallagher, who suffered a head injury in the game against Valerenga on Saturday, won't be fit for selection tonight against Hearts, and that uh, Kit Lefersky, who also went off injured on Saturday, is touch and go, which would leave Celtic without their two first-choice strikers. Um, it was hoped that Lefersky might well be fit enough to be on the ben bench and come on uh, later in the second half. For that reason, it's likely Celtic may well start with Tyree Burchell and uh, the other American uh, forward, uh, Murphy Agnew, um, to replace Amy Gallagher and uh, our main American striker, Kit Lefersky. There's also the option of uh, Amy Sharkey, who has played and scored 
earlier in the season. And Celtic women do have a, a lot of good quality players, both uh, um, to come in to replace and to come off the bench. Um, and also they have quite a fluid system uh, where players like uh, Shen and Barclay and Partido and Jenny Smith and um, Kavanaugh can all come through from midfield and from deeper to play uh, and score in the final third. We'll give you all an update uh, tomorrow in tomorrow's video um, with regards the Celtic women's um, result and hopefully they'll win comfortably and go back to the top of the table. Tomorrow we'll start um, previewing the Saturday fixture against Dundee and also starting to look towards our first Champions League game in Rotterdam against Feyenoord uh, next week. Updating on Celtic, Celtic's fitness and also the situation regarding Feyenoord, who at the moment seem to be going through a similar injury crisis and will be missing their number one and number two strikers for the game next week um, and are expected to be utilising one of their attacking midfielders instead through the middle as their main striker. However, we'll update on that uh, over the course of the next few days. So thanks for listening today. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. All completely free. Um, uh, but it does help boost all my ratings, gets people, more people watching the videos. Um, and have a wee go at the uh, trivia question in the uh, community section. And so for today, um, until tomorrow, goodbye and hail, hail.